The latest issue of Bloomberg Business Week hit stands this morning, and we're going to take a closer look at the magazine with its editor, Josh Tieringel, for a closer look what's inside and why. Josh, the cover story is about the Bears. I love yes. this cover. Grr. Thank you. Uh, the Bears have become, you know, popular, shall we say. Nuriel Rubini, Gary Schilling, a couple of uh, the Bears, shall we say, featured in this magazine, in this report in particular. Why take a look at the Bears now? What's, uh, you know, we know the market's in decline, but right. a lot of these guys have had bearish forecasts for years. And that's exactly the point, is that, so the market's in decline. These guys continue to say, all hell is about to break loose. Get out, get out, be cautious. And everybody knows a, a, a broken clock is right twice a day. And so what we want to do is try and figure out how seriously should we be taking these people? I mean, they sit in this very chair, they talk to you, their views are consistent. And what we try to get at is like, is this shtick? I mean, some of them have been so successful. Nouriel Rabini, you know, we, we know he had groupies for a time. I mean, he's effectively, I mean, he's equivalent to a rock star. He is a rock star, and he's a rock star of doom. I don't know who his real life rock star equivalent is, but that's what he brings. And so the question is, how relevant is his worldview? Is his worldview now hardened because of his success? Um, does he really believe it? And, and how relevant is it to the current situation? Has his opinion changed? And what we see with, you know, eight, ten bears that we look at is that some really don't change their philosophies at all. In fact, they're not philosophies, they're ideologies. Then you've got a guy like Jim Grant. You know, Grant has been through this before. And what you see there is a little bit of softening, a, a, an attempt to try and mold his uh, outlook to where the situation is. And, it, you know, I just think it's a really interesting time. I mean, as we know, the market's all over the place. It's a good moment to try and figure out how uh, relevant these people's outlook is. It's unusual with bears because unlike people who make a good call on the upside, as a bear you only have to call it once right to be seen as a seer effectively. I exactly. I mean, we forget Nostradamus made a lot of predictions about a lot of stuff. It's only the ones where things go horribly wrong. You know, his batting average is probably pretty low and the same with a lot of the bears is that if you're consistent <laughs> that everything's going to go to hell, eventually you will be right. Josh, I want to find out why a couple of other stories appeared in the yeah, magazine. Absolutely. Apple is a story, I mean, it's a hot story right now, the iPhone 4. We've got a little bit of a break out of the iPhone sure. 4 here. I'll just show it for everyone. Well, we have it on the screen there. And also silly bands, yeah. right? Your kids may have these. Millions and millions of these things are being sold. Why do Business Week readers need to know about these stories? Well, so, I mean, a little bit of that is about our philosophy as a magazine, which is I want to be on the news. You know, it's, it's called Business Week. I mean, it's called Bloomberg Business Week. We want to be right on the news. And for iPhone, it's not just about Steve Jobs doing another big press event and they're getting, you know, tons of ink about it. It's about understanding what in the product has to do with Apple strategy. Because, you know, every product has two faces. One is towards the consumer, and the other is toward the competitors. And here, we've all talked about the consumer-facing side of the iPhone 4. We really wanted to take a look at how those feature sets are also aimed at Google and, and the rest of the mobile space and everybody else who wants to get into it. And there's a real competitive footprint that they're laying out with iPhone 4. So that's why that story, I feel like, you know, we needed to get that out this week. Silly bands, um, it seems like a really goofy, fun, kid-aimed, novelty kind of story. In fact, there's a real economy to fads. And the founder of Silly Bands, who's in Toledo and has been staffing up like crazy, he's a really interesting guy. And he's a classic American entrepreneur, a little bit of a hustler, um, taking advantage of his moment. Um, but these things do have real patterns. And so it's a, it's a business. It's a real live business at this point. Josh, it's always great to have you. Josh Tiringel of Business Week. A look inside the issue and inside the editor's brain. Uh, always great to have him. The issue hits business, uh, rather business, Bloomberg Business Week hit stands today.